Welcome everybody, thanks for being here and I would like to thank also all the organizers for inviting me and I want to thank also Moritz for running all this event. This is my first time that I participate in the photo event, photo book event. And it has been exciting to follow the lectures and discussions and I think I have learned a lot of new things here. So, and uh, I would like to thank Jens also for his lecture because he actually gave the introduction to Finnish book, photo book tradition, which I don't have here. Because I, am, I have concentrated only on contemporary photo books, which are published mainly during five years. So they are quite new ones. And they are very different generation compared to that uh, generation that Jens was talking to you downstairs. Uh, a bit about myself. I uh, started to work with photography years, too many years ago. But last nine years I have been uh, <coughs> running two different art museums in Finland. So I have not worked specially with photography for years. So this gave me a nice occasion to go back to photography and look at that, what has happened in, in that field in Finland. Of course I have followed photography, but that has not been not the only medium which uh, I have been working with. So most of the artists, um, I will talk about artists or photographers, but I mean, you know, it's, these are artists who are using photography as a medium. So, um, and most of them are educated in the photographic department of uh, Aalto University, which is the only educational forum in Finland where you can have your MA studies. M many of you might have heard about the notion of Helsinki School, mm -hmm. and it actually means all the people who have graduated in, in Aalto University in photography. But um, I have selected also publications by the artists who have not studied in that school, who have a self-taught artist, for example, and so on. So there are uh, differences, different kind of backgrounds um, that I have selected here. With many of them I have worked, I have done their exhibitions, I have brought their works uh, to collections, and I have written some articles about their works. So basically I know personally all of them. And um, because I work as a curator, I, was, um, I didn't pick up these things only because I think the books are beautiful, but also because I think artists are great. And that's why, <laughs> that's why I might have some tiny publications that are not so, you know, great as, as such but I appreciate the work so much that I wanted to bring <coughs> even those tiny publications here. And um, publishing uh, photo books in Finland is, um, it's uh, nowadays a little bit different situation than it was uh, 10 years ago. We used to have a grant for photo books, to publish photo books. But unfortunately we don't have that grant anymore. But on the other hand, we have many kind of grants to photographers and artists to work and to make pro projects. So somehow many of these publications, for example, they have got finances from the state, which is a great thing in these days when everything is you know, getting more and more difficult in economical terms. And uh, what is uh, also interesting with the uh, Finnish publication is that the shift towards international field, because it used to be so that we had only one publisher in Finland called Mustataide, which is still existing, and it's fantastic, uh, fantastic publishing house. It's black art in English. And, um, but that was the only one. And we had one uh, photo magazine, but we don't have that anymore either. So young people, they have Balum now... Hunger. Sorry? Balum yes, but it's not, it doesn't no. exist anymore. No. No. no, not for years anymore. Even, I think, ten years. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
There's only one art magazine actually printed form, in printed form. Then we have some uh, websites that are about uh, contemporary art, but not especially about photography. So, um, so what has happened is that uh, young people, they have found uh, international publishing houses in Finland, and many of them have found publishers from Germany, as you see from here as well. So there are um, publishing houses from Germany, some from the USA, and some of the publications are published by the artists by themselves, or published by the art museums. We have to remember that art museums are quite important when it comes to the publishing of contemporary art and photography in general. But I have selected only monographs here. Not I, I didn't include any exhibition catalogs, and uh, because I wanted to. Uh, well, this was basically on. I agreed with Beate that I take as many books as I can put into my luggage. So this is <laughs> one very important criteria why uh, why I have so few things here, for example. But it's okay as well because I wanted to, um, to offer you a possibility to get at least, get to know at least some of your our artists and the publications. So this is kind of a luggage, traveling exhibition in a luggage, let's say like that. But uh, in the end, uh, all these publications will be donated to Gallery Image, and I'm happy that they will find this. Excellent. Mm. So we, you have time to look at them afterwards if you are from here. And uh, what is interesting for me as a curator is always to think about what kind of issues or meanings uh, artworks have and how we can what are the concerns of the artists that they are bringing up in their works? And it's not a big surprise to tell you that nature is very, <laughs> very much a topic in, in our culture, in our visual arts and in photography. But, but not, as, um, not as nature as such, but as a man's relationship to nature, mostly like that. And uh, that's one important topic. And then I realized that I have actually selected publications that are dealing with this issue, mostly. I have few exceptions here. So I actually worked like a curator making an exhibition. I couldn't think out of the box. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> sorry, I have kind of themes here. But um, one thing I was paying attention first was uh, was uh, that these, all the publications, they are very classical in that sense that they first have a text by a creator or researcher or by an art historian. And then they have the pictures of the artworks. And um, this format is very common. But then I found out that there are nice exceptions. Like, for example, this Ville um, Lenker is new publication here. which is just uh, published this year, Existence Doubtful. He is traveling Antarctic, Antarctic, how do you say in English, and to Fuoco de la Terra, um, together with the researchers. It's five weeks journey by boat, ice break actually. And in the end, he is publishing a book that is mostly about, um, it's a text, it has a wonderful text about this journey, together with images. But in this publication, it's very special that the text is actually more dominating than the images themselves. And I was very surprised to find out that he is so talented writer. It's so exciting, the text is so exciting. I really recommend this to you to find out. And the images and the text, they go very well together. It's also very classical design here. It's nothing, no, no tricks or anything like that. But uh, in a way, this is an exception in an exceptional book in, in this gender. And uh, some other things I found out that there is um, Anni Leppala here. No, that one. <coughs> And Anni has here also um, one dummy in another section. And this publication includes poets. 
like this. This is very nice. So she invited Wu Karpelaan, who is a great poet, to write poems, which he, she included into the publication. And um, so this is uh, also a fantastic way to collaborate uh, with being a photographer and a poet. And if you want, you can it. And one other example is Elina Broderus, you might know very well. And uh, this is her last publication, this year also published, 12 years later. And she also invited a poet to write poems which go together with her images. These uh, texts are never illustrating the images or vice versa. They are independent in a way. But uh, when you read and look, you can understand why they are in the same publication. And now Elena is now just now working with another publication that is coming out in a few weeks. And unfortunately, I couldn't take that here. But in that new publication, she's not using text at all. And it's really fantastic. I saw the first crafts of that. And it's a, such a publication that words are really not needed at all. It's really beautiful. So I keep it here, or do you want here? Well, then. So this is uh, the combination of text and uh, image, which was interesting for me. And, um, but then uh, when I was thinking about the uh, other meanings, and, uh, about this nature subject, and how it is expressed in, in Finnish uh, photo books, of course, these are not nature photographers' publications, but they are, they are all artists who are dealing with the issue when, when in very different ways. And in the 90s, I met um, one of my colleagues from Sweden, and he told to me that Finnish photography is full of naked men running in forests. <laughs> 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 and, I, and he was, uh, and he was uh, re meaning, he was referring to photographer Arno Rafael Minkinen. Yeah. You know him maybe, who is uh, living in the USA but was born in Finland. And every now, now and then he comes to work to Finland and he was also a teacher for many years. So certainly he has influenced uh, the tradition in this, tra that tradition which I call actually now like performing parties because I figured out that we have such uh, many photographers who are doing that but not, not male anymore. Now they are <laughs> women and they are not naked. But <laughs> let me see, I will show you. Oh yes, here. Like uh, this is dummy, the only dummy I have with me, done by Susanna Majuri. And uh, Susanna is one who is using her self in a picture, performing her own model, depends. So there is only one very famous picture. And she is working actually lots of in, in, in Ireland, here. This must, you must have seen this maybe sometimes, yes. So this is a kind of continuation of this, you know, parties in landscape, as I see it as a tradition, you know, a photoculture. And Susanna has uh, done this, but nowadays she's working under the water, so that it's interesting. Her models are swimming together with the images inside the water. And it's interesting that uh, she's not working uh, in digital means, but she actually produces first the image and then puts that into the water together with the model. And in that way, she creates her works. 
they are very mystical and mystical as well. So, and this publication is, we don't know yet who is going to publish that, but it's, you know, <laughs> it's coming. But then another one who is actually working a little bit similar way, and also with the same team like Paris and Landscape, is Janne Lehtinen, who is even more performative. And this is the cover. <laughs> yeah. And it's a, even, I mean, even they are posing themselves, it's still not about them themselves. They are not really self portraits sometimes. They are more like expressing something else, but with very performative, very theatrical way. And, uh, yeah. But this publication was done uh, in the end of the residency that he was having in France. But then again, we have very classical ways of working with nature, like Tina, Tina Itkonen, who is uh, working in um, Greenland. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you have uh, never seen her images, but she has done this uh, quite many years already. This is the second publication by her about the same subject. And uh, he's, he's very focused on, on, on this. Uh, she spends, I think, so half a year in, uh, in, the, in Greenland. And nowadays, more and more expressing this landscape in more minimal way, in a way, because she used to photograph her people also, but not so much anymore. It's very focused on landscape, but very traditional way. Here you are. Okay. And what else we have with Nate? Um, it's a um, couple of the artists, they are working with scientific, uh, scientists, and they have adapted some uh, methodology of, uh, of them, like uh, Sanna Kangisto, for example. She went to rainforest in Brazil with um, biologists, natural scientists, and uh, learned from them certain things and developed her own way to capture these fantastic things from nature there. They are like mini studios, studio photos, She's building these studios in the forest and working in, in there, and they are really amazing. I just have to find one picture where she shows herself working. Ah, there's one. She has built this small box. Mm -hmm. There's a frog. <laughs> but it's also nice that she's sewing how she's doing the works. I mean, that's uh, and this publication is quite beautiful. It was done by Aperture. So it's, uh, and one more who is doing this kind of um, so-called scientific or nature with science stuff. <laughs> Is it's Ilka Hals, maybe you know her work or his works as well. So it was a pity that he has not published a bigger publication. I, I was really shocked when I found out that he don't actually have a proper publication, but then I wanted to take this anyway because I hope somebody would someday make a good book with him. So. But he has, in a way, also a similar kind of idea. He is, a little bit ironical way, building structures around uh, nature objects like trees. And it's kind of, you know, he's calling this restoration of nature. A man who is healing nature. If <laughs> we could say that it should be opposite way. 
So it's this is um, his question in our questioning of our um, you know our life. How we what can he do to protect his things? And he started to work in a way that he made a real. I mean, this are uh, like land art pieces. He really constructed all these things. But nowadays, he's using also more digital means because these constructions are so huge. What he's showing in his pictures, they are really taking over the nature. But uh, you know, this is kind of finish craziness <laughs> in a good way. <laughs> Yeah, this is the very classical nature aspect. And then I was uh, thinking that uh, Jaakko Heikkilä, who is also a very famous documentarist, silent talk. Can somebody give me that? Uh, thanks. Jaakko is a photographer who is uh, working with the minorities and with cultural identity issues. And he started to work with a minority, Finnish-speaking minority in Sweden, in northern Sweden. And they have their own language there. So, but nowadays he's working all over the world. Like he's working with Armenian people in America, in Venice. He has been in, in many, many places. And he goes very close to people, as you see. But also in his photographs, there's always this Silence, emptiness, as well. And he worked also in Harlem in New York many years. And these sleeping people are some of his subjects. Yeah, so it's uh, about the nature and in the variations about that. But then I was thinking that um, what about urban life? Who is, um, is there anybody who is working with urban life? And Markus Hentonen, who has been here in our house, I think so, in uh, working with the uh, gallery image, right? Mm -hmm. With project. So Markus is known for uh, his works from Brazil and from big cities. But when I asked him to send me a publication, he sent it me this without nobody. I mean, this is also <laughs> very empty, but it's very funny. He has been working in the uh, US with uh, Christmas lights. And this is, this is a publication without any text. So this is uh, only this more, more, one more small paragraph here. But what is, uh, if we think about uh, abstract, uh, more abstract images, then we can look at, uh, what is this, Man Mahan book, this one. And believe me or not, but these are urban landscapes is uh, holding a big sides camera, moving, as uh, also cars and people and everybody's moving and using one exposing time. So it becomes like an abstract image system. So you see this is a selection of Finnish publication. It is really Finnish because there are no people and it's very <laughs> empty, very silent. Even, even, like even in the <laughs> urban images <laughs> are like this. <laughs> That's what we are. <laughs> what can we say? But in uh, some exceptions anyway. I have one publication by Nikola Luoma who is making um, there are not so many artists in Finland who are using photography and making something like that, something very abstract. So. It's very skillful, but it's a <coughs> technique that is very demanding. I think that every line is, um, how do you say, it's uh, done one by one, so that it's, it gives light to one line on time, and then to the other one. 
So one image needs a lot of time to do that, like here. Oh, several exposures. In yeah, right. The that's right. Yeah. So each line is an exposure. Yes. Or, uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. It, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> needs really all of this. Is that because of the long, dark winter nights of Finland? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's something we can go and we can go to the climate that explains our nature or so. <laughs> that's Maybe so. But then I took one uh, small publication of um, uh, Rita Jokiranta, who is a media artist also, because I was thinking that how media artists can present their works. And for me, it's interesting to see um, also documentation of installations. Also, with, when I look at photo books, I always try to find out some documentation of the exhibitions because it gives me a different kind of understanding of the work. I always see the works in spaces, so it's, <coughs> for me it's uh, difficult to look only a picture. A picture. So uh, Rita has done uh, also photographs, but also installations with uh, moving images. And this publication is uh, one example of uh, how artists can present her moving images without a uh, DVD or anything like that. What else we have here? Oh yes, Raquel. Mm. This book is more, many of our of the contemporary artists are dealing with issues of identity. And in Finland, it <coughs> happened in the 80s that we, that women came to the art field in a very powerful way. In photography, for example, we had uh, plenty of women who started their careers in the 80s. And Raquel Kuka is one of them, still continuing actually with the same subject matter, like identity and family and family history. And this is a publication titled Letters to My Daughter. And uh, this is her daughter dressed up with a Finnish national dress and the daughter's father is from Kana. So they are just dealing with this issue of cultural and personal identity here. Nice way, also very affirmative actually. And this publication is done by Musta Taide, the Black Art. That was a cover to Nan Mahanin, and it was that one. Yes, yeah, that's right. Somebody told me yesterday, of course, somebody was telling that uh, it's a very traditional way to place the image always to the, oh, on, the it, right side, on the right yeah. side and the text on the left side. Usually, yeah. yeah, so this is a very classical example yeah. of this. <laughs> <laughs> this is beautiful, okay. isn't yeah. that? Mario Cavani is, uh, I mean, she has focused on plants, flowers for years and years. She has been photographing these things. And they are so amazing and beautiful. So minimal as well. More nature, who else we haven't talked? There is Maria Pirilas, maybe we can look that book as well. Maria has been working with the uh, camera obscura. Always. See, this is a monograph of her works from 20 years. She turns the rooms 
to come and obscure us so that there is an inner and outer world in the picture. I have been taking part into his workshop sometimes, so I know it was very fun. It's fantastic medium, in a way. It's so slow and so unexpected. Everything can happen. I think it's a very philosophical medium. <laughs> so it's... Um, But also in her images, you can see how powerful nature is. Because nature is coming from outside, usually. It's not in there. It was very popular in the, in the beginning of the 90s to use old techniques in photography in Finland. So pinhole camera, for example, was very popular medium for a while. I think we have always, almost everything we have gone through, except this one, which is um, Anni, who is also belongs to this performing parties <laughs> generation, but it's a younger generation, person. But anyway, having almost a similar tradition. No one has done any research on this uh, performing bodies and landscape, actually, because it's very clear that there is this line in Finnish photography. Just now I was thinking about that. It would be something to talk more carefully sometimes. So, I mean, this is basically the selection I have done, and they are, you know, they are no way representing anything like Finnish photography. They are no way representing anything that I like Finnish photo books. They are just my personal choice, which is very small and very selective as well. Yes. So thank you for your attention. I'm happy to answer your questions if you have anything or comments over there. <laughs>
But also, I don't know what else. I mean, is there something that is... Because I was also a little bit um, not happy that I didn't find any... I didn't find, find any monographs dealing with uh, photographers who are working with political or social or documentaristic tradition more. Mm -hmm. So they are missing in the publications, but they still exist, of course. They have that kind of tradition. So is it so that publishing houses uh, tend to publish something like that more than something else? I don't know. To the perception that we have of Finnish photography, it's also translated into the books. Mm -hmm. As you said, you know, thinking school. Yeah. Maybe publishers tend to go towards that type yes. of photography yeah. instead of yeah. trying other genres. Yeah, I was actually, yeah, you said it more clearly, but I was thinking about that. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, the commercial. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, even though I wouldn't say that they are commercial because they are, you know, mm -hmm. but it's uh, something that I, I'm not so sure about. Yeah, something maybe should look more carefully. It might be just um, when we did the Helsinki school back in the 2003, four maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Very early. Uh, yeah. Edison, yeah. right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, you I, made I, I an exhibition. The, yeah. Ah, okay. Yes. Before it was called the Helsinki school, actually, it was the first Helsinki yes. school exhibition at Brandt. Ah, okay. Yes. Yeah. And I asked, I posed um, Bert Bikekarain the same question. Yeah. How come there's so many Finnish photography books? Mm. And with his Finnish sense of humor, he laconically <laughs> answered, I think that's because we've got a lot of forests. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh no! <laughs> oh no! That was a long Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> That's interesting, your answer. Yeah. Then we have the forest. Oh yes, we have a lot of paper, yeah, maybe paper. as well. <laughs> Printing paper. <laughs> Might be a simple solution, but yeah. but those uh, some of these publications they are not published in Finland anymore. I, mean, I think that they are published somewhere else as well. So it's uh, yeah, but also they have such a huge tradition of uh, different kind of publications and beautiful, beautiful ones that I couldn't take here now. But sometimes I'm very happy that Jens, you presented these Finnish publications that are very important in our story. Mm, absolutely. So that was very well done. One thing I was thinking, do you have in your collection in the branch, do you have this uh, Höltas, Ismo Hölta, that uh, big, big uh, monograph by him? No? It's like a Bible. It's like very, it's uh, first published in uh, in the uh, 70s. Now there's a republished uh, in uh, 2000 and something. No? Okay, because he is one I was missing in your presentation. <laughs> That's alright. Yes. Any other questions or comments? No? Well, there's uh, in nature, no? and with body and nature, there's a lot of ways how to interact with nature. I interesting there's only one where you have this kind of more romantic yeah. uh, or romanticist um, way, you know, the one with Greenland where you have really like no the ah, small body and big nature. Yeah, right. you know? Whereas the rest really seems to be naked men or women running in forests. <laughs> so there is so my question would be how um, <laughs> How much uh, influence is there really by Nikon and uh, yeah. because he was yeah. in, when did he go to America in the eighties already or when? Yeah, yeah, but you ha you have to know that uh, he has been in Finland all the time in a way because okay. he worked he works still in Finland every now and then almost every year he comes mm -hmm. and he has been a regular teacher at the uh, at the photograph at the university yeah. so he, he has been teaching generations and generations. But of course, this kind of imaginary not necessarily linked to his works completely. It's just my in my mind that I was thinking that okay, and with this joke that I was told, I was thinking that wow, I have to tell this to my Swedish colleagues sometimes. That okay, now you can look. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I don't know. And this he has not been a teacher by him, for example, and not for uh, Elina. Maybe he has been teaching Elina. But not all. But it doesn't matter, I mean, whether he has no, been It seems to be yeah. present, no? Because yeah. there is the, um, the figure always has this kind of distance, no? the same mm -hmm. three or five meter distance. 
Mm -hmm. uh, uh, whereas, no, this is so different because here you have a whatever, 30 meters or 50 meters distance. No? Uh -huh. One in Greenland, no? Where, so the, you really have the, uh, whatever, no? the uh, sublime um, oh, yes. grandeur of nature mm -hmm. in comparison to the little explorer. Okay, no? yeah, and right. Here right. you have a body that is very quite near to the camera. Yeah, right. That's correct. Right. In yeah. Way, no? yeah, it's like uh, Minkinen was, of course, one who was very close to camera lens, and if you remember his works, um, but, yeah. and he made his body as part of the nature very much. It was very surreal almost. Mm -hmm. Talking performative. Yes, yeah, it's very performative. But then the other other tradition where you see this long distance, it's maybe more related to romanticism and romantic painting, mm -hmm. to the German tradition of romantic painting, mm -hmm. right? Very so. Yeah, because it's something like that. And when we think about Elena Brodeu's work, for example, one of the series was titled The New Painting, and you can see herself placed in the mountains like, you know, what is this, a British? No, what British. is this? Yeah, the painter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Completely similar way. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's, there's a tradition of the dialogue with painting for yeah. certain photographers. Yeah. And others are more photographic, maybe? Yeah, maybe, but I, just, I think that this is, um, yeah, this is more romantic tradition and this is much more bodily involving more physical, more performative, mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Maybe. Somebody have to make a result. <laughs> 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 oh, no. Look into it. Yeah. yeah. yeah those, uh, that work looks very painterly. I, when I looked at it, I thought about that. Yeah, as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it, mm -hmm. it obviously has connections to many things. We, we can read things in different ways. Yes, of course. And it's yeah. good mm -hmm. that they can do that mm -hmm. as well. Like still lives, you know, even the studio in Brazil mm. where she's doing it's still lives, it's all yeah. tradition that yeah, that's comes true. From, from painting. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We can see a uh, lot yeah. of uh, connections between two, these yeah. two mediums. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. But I think I'm also finished photography, which is much more directly like I don't remember the name of the photographer, but I think that. The series was called Young Heroes. Yeah, it's Joko Lehtola. Yeah, I know him, yes. yes. He died quite uh, 40 years ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we made his um, big exhibition in uh, Kiasma when I was working there, and I bought his works for our collection. And he was really, really, you know, kind of rock person in a way also. Yeah. He so went he was to festivals. Like the person she photographed. Yes, yeah. absolutely. He was photographing young culture, musicians, rock people, and the people who were tattooed, you know. And he was so good with the, all this, um, this cultures, you know. It was fantastic. He made fantastic work. But unfortunately, I don't have his publication now. I know that they are doing a new publication by him, but it's not ready yet. It's yes, so so very different from all the others. Yes, it is. And that's why I was missing that. I was missing this kind of uh, gender that is bringing people on focus. Yes. But is we that, still have that. Sorry. Is that yeah. him that made, he made a book called Made in Finland? Sorry? Made in Finland? Is that him? I don't know. Someone else. Made in Finland. No, I can't remember that it was no. his, no? No? He made a publication, yes, but I can't remember what the title is. Because he became famous with um, with the exhibition that was in Moderna Museum in the 90s, Organizing Freedom. That was, that was the title of the exhibition. Okay. And um, so see, he became much more known with that exhibition. Yeah. It sounds a little bit as if he could have learned by Stefan Brimmer. Yes, yeah, Stefan was, yes, of course, Stefan was older uh, yeah, than Joko, but, you know, but uh, Stefan is, of course, is a uh, kind of... Connection with, with uh, yeah. people. Yes, and Stefan, and yeah, Stefan has a fantastic uh, yeah. publications and fantastic works, and Stefan is a little bit like uh, Joko, but in black and white. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so exactly. That's uh, maybe the difference. Yeah. So we have a very strong tradition of this kind of photography as well, as you mentioned, Joko Lehtola, Stefan Bremer, mm -hmm. and so on, mm -hmm. yes. And, uh, yeah. But they are not published by German publishers. Mm -hmm. 
No. <laughs> <laughs> and not, no, that's right. They are not that kind of material that may be interesting. Mm, I don't know. Yeah. And of course they are also older generation. So, yeah. hmm. so any more questions? Or? Yeah. Any more questions, comments, anything? No. Thank you. Thank you.